Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have got a Disney video for you and I think this is the first Disney video I've done on my channel, which is quite exciting. So as some of you might know, some of you won't, I am off to Disneyland Paris in September. It is, well, we've been once before and it was 10 years ago. So it kind of feels like this is our first time. Um, and I have been doing a lot of planning. Basically, we're going to, like, as an early celebration for my 30th birthday, which is in October. Um, and yeah, I've just done a lot more, like, planning and stuff this time. And I thought I would share some of what I've kind of picked up with you guys. I've really enjoyed watching YouTube videos, but there seem to be a lot for, um, like, Disney World in Florida and not a huge amount for Disneyland Paris. So I've got quite a few ideas of videos that I would like to do, um, both like before, during and after the holiday. Um, and I thought I would start with a Disneyland Paris planning video. I have, yeah, tried to include as much as I can. Obviously I'm doing this as someone who hasn't actually been yet. Um, I know I went 10 years ago, but as I said, like we didn't really plan much then and I was a lot younger. So I'm kind of doing this as a first time person, I suppose. So, you know, I can only speak from the perspective of someone that hasn't been yet. Um, but hopefully some of the stuff that I've kind of researched and sort of found out from other people might be helpful to you. I've tried to split this video into like sections to make it easier to sort of like break down. So yeah, I'm just gonna get started because I've got like, I printed out like two sheets of A4 paper full of like plans. So the first section is just general planning. And there's a couple of things that have helped me a lot with my planning. And the first thing is watching YouTube videos and reading blogs, but more watching YouTube videos. Um, there are just so many out there. Like I have just ended up searching on YouTube for sort of like Disneyland Paris or Disneyland Paris food, Disneyland Paris shops, like anything you can possibly think of. If you put it into Google, uh, YouTube or Google, you will probably find something. But yeah, I've just found it really useful hearing it from other people's perspectives. Like I have used the Disneyland Paris website quite a lot, especially um, to sort of find out about like each of the restaurants and things. But I think you can't really beat hearing about it from a fellow holiday maker because they're gonna tell you things that the Disneyland website may not tell you. And I wanted to just share a few of my favorite Disneyland or, and Disney World, Disney in general, um, YouTubers with you. Um, I have watched like Disney World videos as well and some of the stuff that they have like said about you can transfer to Disneyland Paris. So the first person that I've really been enjoying watching is Brogan Tate. I will link everyone in the description bar so that you can just go and click on them and watch their videos. Um, Brogan has been to Disney and well both Disney's quite a bit. So she's got quite a few like Disney vlogs and Disneyland planning things as well. And I've found her videos really helpful. She does loads of other stuff as well as do most of these people. Um, but yeah, her videos are really helpful. Um, next is Steph in the Spaniels. She actually got married in Disney World. Um, so she has quite a lot of footage from like their trip then, but they've been to various Disney places, I think, um, quite a few times. So she has a lot of Disney vlogs, but she also has a lot of like Disney planning videos and stuff. Um, and she's got really like two really cute dogs as well. So yeah, I'd recommend her. The next person is Sarah Louise Porter, who does a heck of a lot of Disney videos, whether it's like Disney hauls, um, I believe she's been to Disney. Yeah, she has been to Disney before because she spoke about like doing Disney with a disability, which I found quite helpful because um, I've got a disability and that kind of stuff is gonna be really important to me. Um, and it's stuff that I'm planning to do a video on as well. But yeah, she does a lot of Disney stuff. So she's been really helpful. Uh, Brummy Mummy of Two is like a massive Disney fan. I feel like I can identify with her on so many levels because she just, she loves Disney. And they've done Disneyland Paris and Disney World. Um, quite recently they did Disney World, but they do they go to Disney quite a lot. So she has done a lot of videos as well and I absolutely love her vlogs. Uh, Louise Pentland has done Disney a few times and she does really great videos as well. Um, she's got two little girls and I think they are planning another Disney trip fairly soon. So it would be quite interesting to watch her videos and see like what they do this time. Um, and then Alex Gladwin, who is Bump to Baby, um, 
she went to Disneyland Paris fairly recently and she's written a lot of blog posts about it and done quite a lot of videos about it and I found her like stuff really helpful as well. Um, also, Lara Joanna, what's her name? Oh, Lara, I oh, know it's Lara Joanna Jarvis, that's one, Lara Joanna Jarvis. Um, so I can only think of her first name because I know her personally and I obviously don't call her by her second name. Um, but yeah, they are going to Disney World like any time now, I think. Um, I don't know if they've done Paris, but um, if you like Disney vlogs and stuff, definitely check out her channel because she's going to be posting lots. She's also done lots of like posts on her blog and stuff. So if you're doing Disney World, you might find those quite helpful. So that's all the kind of YouTubers that I wanted to recommend. There are so many others out there. I couldn't include everybody, um, but those were just some of my favorites. The other thing that I found helpful is a Facebook group that one of my friends suggested to me, and it's called Disneyland Paris for Brits. Um, again, I will link it below. But basically it's just, well, a lot of people from the UK who are going to Disneyland Paris or who have been to Disneyland Paris and people just share tips, ask questions um, about anything and everything. I found it really helpful just like following, you know, what other people are posting. I've asked my own questions as well. Um, and yeah, there's just so much information on there, whether you're like um, going with like young children, whether you're going as an adult, there's people who've like asked like, oh, is it gonna be okay to like, you know, um, go and ask like characters for autographs and photos if I haven't got kids with me and stuff, which of course it is. Um, you know, they talk about rides, they talk about restaurants, meal plans, um, hotels, like where the best places to stay are the shops, extra magic hours, like everything you can possibly need to know about Disney, you can find on that Facebook group. So yeah, for general planning, kind of YouTube videos and that Facebook group have just been like a lifesaver for me. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is booking the holiday, which is obviously quite an important thing because that's kind of the first thing you need to do. Um, my number one tip for this would be to check for deals there always seems to be a deal, like some sort of deal for Disneyland Paris like holidays. Um, I think at the moment there's like a book two nights and get like two nights and two days free, which is how we did ours. So we are going from Monday to Friday. Um, and I think we booked, so we would have paid for like, I think three nights or four, no, hang on. Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Yeah, so we booked two nights and would have got another two nights for free, which is fantastic. Um, you know, I think we would have really struggled to afford to do like a whole week because it's not a cheap holiday. Um, so finding that deal, you know, it means we can have a longer holiday. We've got more time to enjoy the parks. Um, this is for staying in Disney hotels. I don't know if it's applicable to like other hotels. Um, but yeah, it's just meant we can have a bit of a longer holiday, enjoy more time there and not pay so much, which, you know, is great by anyone's book. Um, we booked with the Walt Disney Travel Company um, and got that deal. So if that's what you're kind of looking for, have a look there. But I'm sure if you go to like, um, travel agents or like other websites where you can book Disney holidays like everyone seems to have deals like whether that's getting like a free um half board meal plan or you know some like f formation of getting like something for free so it's all always worth checking and if you kind of can't find anything maybe leave it a week or so and then see if you can like find anything later and also ask on that Facebook group that I talked about because people on there should probably know like what's what deals are out there. What I will say is we booked with the Disney travel company, but we didn't book the Eurostar with them. We kind of initially had planned to book the Eurostar with them. And when we rang up to book the holiday, they actually said to us, it would actually be cheaper if you book the Eurostar separately, which I think was quite good because a lot of travel companies will just try and push like their packages um and not consider like what the best option for you might be so the fact that they said to us like don't book the eurostar with us was like well it was brilliant it was really helpful so we booked the eurostar like directly through eurostar and it did come out like quite a bit cheaper so it's worth like remembering that when you're booking um your like whole like set of travel package so while we're talking about travel i will go on to like 
options for travel to Disney. So you need to decide how you want how you want to get there. And obviously that's possibly going to depend on whereabouts in the UK or further afield that you live. For us, going on the Eurostar just made sense. Like we're not a huge distance from London, we can get a taxi up to St Pancreas and then the Eurostar, you get on there and when you get out the other end you are in Disney, you don't have to get a taxi or anything like that, you are there. So that kind of worked better for us but you know there's plenty of other options, you can fly, um, I know flights go out of like well obviously like Heathrow and stuff but also like smaller airports. Um, there is the Euro Tunnel, so if you want to drive, you can take your car and then drive down there. I think there is parking like in the Disney hotels and I'm sure in other hotels they have their own parking as well. Or you could get the ferry and then drive from like, I don't know, Calais down to Disneyland Paris. So there are plenty of options and it's a good idea to work out like what would be like the best cost effective option, but also what would suit your family best. Some people you know, like flying, some people don't, some people want the ease of like just getting off a train and being where you need to be. Some people want a little bit more freedom to have their car with them. So it's kind of worth thinking like, what do you want for your family? Um, and there's, yeah, there's plenty of options. Um, so as I said, we decided to go on the Eurostar and it comes straight into Disney. We did it last time we went and yeah, it just worked fantastically. Um, you can add, when you're on the Eurostar, sorry I'm just reading my notes, you can add um, something called Disney Express luggage and an, and an advanced check-in service. So basically it means when you get to Disney, you can go straight into the parks, you don't have to go and check in, you don't have to like take your luggage anywhere, that's all sorted for you. So you literally get off the train and go and start having fun in the parks. We did do that last time, but it was included in the price. And it was really, really helpful. But this time we asked about it and you had to pay extra for it. And we kind of, we thought about it and yes, it would have been like helpful and it would have meant we wouldn't have had to like worry about going to the hotel first or anything. But the extra cost just for us wasn't worth it. You know, we can just take a few minutes to take our bags to the hotel, check in, put them in our room and then go. Um, so for us, like it just wasn't worth it, but it might be something that you would want to consider if you're going by Eurostar and you don't wanna go and have to check in and put all your bags and stuff in the hotel first. So the next thing that you might need to think about or will need to think about is accommodation. And there are quite a lot of different options for accommodation. So you can choose to stay in a Disney hotel. So by Disney hotel, I mean, these are hotels that are on the Disney site, they're owned by Disney and there's sort of various ones you can choose from. So there's those. There are also partner hotels, which are kind of very, very near to Disney. And you can book them through, like if you were gonna book through Disney, you can actually book a partner hotel through Disney and do it that way. You don't get the same benefits, but they are quite close. Or if you don't wanna do either of those, you could find somewhere else local. I'm sure there's plenty of other hotels nearby um, that are maybe cheaper or, you know, like base, more basic. Um, so again, you need to just work out what would be best for you and your family. We have decided to stay in a Disney hotel. So we are staying in the New York hotel. And we, so last time we went, we stayed in Newport Bay, which was a really, really lovely hotel. And we were kind of umming and ahhing about like, shall we stay there again? But we decided we wanted to try somewhere else. And the New York hotel is kind of the same rating as the Newport Bay hotel. And it's also going to be closing, I think in October, but that might not be right. Um, because they're completely redoing it. They're turning it into a Marvel hotel. So I quite like the idea that we are gonna be like, one of the last people to stay in the New York hotel. I have heard that it's a little bit run down, but you know, you're not gonna be spending like a huge amounts of time in the hotel. So hopefully that isn't gonna be a problem. Um, so yeah, there is also the Disneyland hotel, which is like, um, as you come straight into the park, it's kind of like the one that's like pink and really pretty. And that's like the most expensive one, which looks amazing and we would have loved to stay there, but the cost was just too much for us. Um, 
So yeah, there's like different tiers of hotels. Um, there's also like less expensive ones that are Disney. So you can kind of find something hopefully to suit your budget. If you do stay in a Disney hotel, um, one of the like benefits you get is something called extra magic hours. So that means that you can go in an hour earlier in the morning than the general public. Um, and I remember we did this last time and it's really good because you know, the only people that get extra magic hours are those in the Disney hotels. So the park is a lot more quiet. Not everything is open as far as I remember, but it does mean that maybe like if there's rides you really want to go on, you can go to those first and not have to queue for so long. Um, I think some characters are out as well, so you may not have to queue so long to meet characters. Um, I've also, I think, well, from what I remember and from what I've heard people say, if you're staying in a Disney hotel, they often have characters like in the reception like foyer. So it's worth like ha having a look around to see if like there's sort of signs that tell you like when characters are going to be there. I remember when we stayed in Newport Bay, I think we met Mickey Mouse in our hotel reception and there was like barely any queue. So it's definitely worth like checking that out, if, especially if you've got kids and you don't want to have to queue for too long. Um, and I believe they do different characters on different days. So it's quite a good way of like meeting them and then being able to go off into the park and not worry about trying to find that character again. Um, so yeah, the extra magic hours I think are definitely worth it. Um, there is also a free shuttle bus from most of the Disney hotels. So like did Disney, like obviously Disneyland Paris isn't as big as um, Florida, but it's still fairly big. So they do have shuttle buses to get you sort of from places in the park back to your hotel again. The only res uh, restaurant, the only part, uh, I can't speak, the only hotel that doesn't have the free shuttle bus is the, where is it? The Davy Crockett Ranch which is a little bit different because it's like a self-catering place. You take your car there. Um, so you kind of probably don't need the shuttle bus because you can drive like from the ranch to the park. Um, so that's the only one that doesn't, but the rest of them, they do have the shuttle bus. Um, what I will say is it is probably more expensive to stay in a Disney hotel than it would be to stay in a partner hotel or like completely off site. Um, so, you know, if you're not wanting to spend loads on a hotel, possibly the Disney ones might not be for you. Um, but for us, like, we just wanted the whole Disney experience. We wanted to be, like, right in the centre of the action. Um, and just to be able to really make the most of it, I suppose. Um, we enjoyed being in Newport Bay last time, so I'm really hoping that the New York will be just as good. Right, so the next thing that you're gonna wanna look at is dining. And dining has been probably the thing that has caused me the most stress. Um, I don't know if that's just me or just because of the way it works, but there, it seems to be quite complicated in certain ways and it's taken me quite a while to like get my head around it and work out what I need to do. So I'm hoping I might be able to help you if like that's causing you stress as well. So you, firstly, you're gonna wanna look at, like, do you want to book a dining plan? There are different types of dining plans. So you can do the breakfast one, you can do half board or full board, and they then have like, half board and full board have different levels depending on the types of restaurants you want to eat at. Um, this, yeah, it does, it is quite, it is quite complicated um, and it's taken me a while to like read about it and understand it. So at first we were like, oh, we don't want to book a dining plan. You know, it's going to like be a waste of money. But actually when we worked it out, we worked out that if we booked a dining plan, we probably would end up saving quite a bit of money on food. So we have gone for the half board plus, I think it is. So basically that means we get breakfast um, I think at our hotel and then either lunch or dinner um, as part of the meal plan. Um, for the half board plus you can eat dinner at most restaurants. There are just a few that aren't included so things like the like Wild West show thing um, and also like character dining and like a couple of the like more expensive restaurants but we had a look through like what restaurants we could dine in and for us it kind of covered what we would have chosen anyway. 
So yeah, for us, I think it's gonna save us money. It does mean we will have to like, so I think we're gonna more go for dinners um, and then lunches, we'll just get something a little bit lighter, um, you know, that we kind of pay for ourselves. Um, it's worth working out actually when you get, so if you get half bored, make sure you use your meal voucher like for the more expensive restaurant. So don't waste a meal voucher, say on getting a snack because yeah, it's just gonna waste you money. Um, you would be much better using the meal voucher to have like a big main meal and then paying for like the snack lunch or something. So yeah, that's what we're doing. You can book your restaurant reservations 60 days in advance of like your holidays. So when I found that out, I marked the date on our calendar saying, you know, this date you need to ring up and book the Disney uh, restaurant reservations. They book up really, really quickly. So, you know, don't leave it any later, like book it on 60 days. Some people I think have managed to book before the 60 days, not sure how that works, but yeah, there you are. Um, for us, we had an English number that we could ring because of the travel company that we've booked through. If you haven't booked through the Walt Disney Travel Company, um, I think it's a French number, so I would recommend like either ringing like really, really early in the morning or quite late at night because then you're gonna have like less queuing on the phone and hopefully it'll cost you less money in phone bills. So yeah, that's that. Um, I thought I would just kind of talk to you about our plan for what we're gonna be eating. So basically, <laughs> it was quite like long-winded way of doing this, but there's five of us going. So there's my mum and my dad, me and my two sisters. So we wanted to make sure that there was something that everybody would like. So I went through all of the restaurants, read about each one. You can see the menus for most of them online. Um, I made some notes about each one and then I sent these notes out to everyone in the family that's going and I said to them, can you have a look through these? Gave them a link to, so that if they want to see the menus they could. And then I said, can you write down any places that you would be interested in going to and send them back to me? So we did that, they sent back their lists. Um, there was a few like the same that people have said that they wanted to go to um, and a few different ones as well. So then we wanted to make sure that we were kind of, each day we would maybe go to a restaurant that one person had wanted to go to, so that overall like everyone went to somewhere that they wanted, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, once we'd done all that and I'd worked out like a short list of restaurants, we then sort of like started planning our days. So Monday, so which yeah, we're traveling on the Monday. We will get there, I reckon about lunchtime, but we didn't, Want, well, actually we didn't want to book lunch at all because we didn't really know what time we were going to get in. However, I the place we wanted to book for dinner, which is Bistro Chez Remy, which I think is the Ratatouille restaurant, don't do dinner, they only do lunch. So we decided we would book a late lunch. So we're going to eat there at three o'clock because um, we get like a little snack on the Eurostar anyway. So yeah, we can kind of have a late lunch there. So we've booked that. At dinner time, we've said we will either go to Planet Hollywood or the Rainforest Cafe. I don't know if you can, well, I don't think you can book those on the phone. Whether you can book them like when you're in the parks, I'm not sure. I do know though that you can't use your meal vouchers for those. But then I'm guessing that we'll probably only be having like a light dinner because of like having a late lunch. So yeah, we'll kind of choose on the day which one of those we want to go to. Then we got Tuesday lunch. We are hoping to go to the Earl of Sandwich. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Um, and yeah, basically they're meant to just do really nice sandwiches and stuff. So that's our plan for Tuesday. Um, and then for Tuesday dinner, we are going to Cape Cod. We've booked for seven o'clock. So that gives us time to see the parade in the park and then the fireworks afterwards as well. Um, so yeah, that one should be quite nice. Wednesday lunch, we've said we want to go to Casey's Corner. Again, we'll pay for this on the day, this isn't booked. And then for dinner, we're gonna to go to Hunter's Grill again at seven o'clock. Thursday breakfast, we have actually booked um, Plaza Gardens for their character-like breakfast. This one 
we will have to pay a bit extra for because it's not included in the half board plus um, dining plan. Um, and we've actually booked for 9.45, so it's gonna be quite a late breakfast. Um, but that does mean either we can have a bit of a lie-in or we can have a little bit of time in the park before we go for the breakfast. And then for Thursday lunch, we're hoping to go to Colonel Hathi's Pizza. Um, and then, yeah, for Thursday dinner, we've booked the Inventions character dining experience at seven o'clock. We kind of accidentally managed to get two character dining experiences on the same day, so breakfast and dinner, but that's just how it's worked out. Um, and again, the Inventions character dining thing, we will have to pay a bit extra for because it's not included in the Half Board Plus. And then Friday lunch before we go, we're hoping to go to, I think it's called Vapiano. I think it's like a, an Italian style restaurant. Um, yeah, and then we go home, which is quite scary. It kind of goes quite fast. Um, so obviously some of those things are set in stone. So like the ones we've booked, the lunch is like if we're out and about and we fancy something different from what's on the plan, obviously we'll just do that. But we thought it would just be easier to have a bit of a plan so that we kind of know what we're doing and what we're like trying to make sure we kind of go to all the places that we want to go. I also wanted to do a little part of this where I spoke about disability and like going to Disney with a disability. This is something that I, I suppose have researched quite a lot because I'm going to be in my wheelchair and I want to make sure that I enjoy it and that there's no like hiccups or, or you know, yes there might be hiccups but you know try and plan for what we can so that it's a good experience for everybody. Um, the first thing is the Eurostar, which is where we've had the most issues actually. So we rang up to book the Eurostar and I was originally hoping to take my electric wheelchair. And when we tried to book a wheelchair space, and this was like months in advance, we were told there were no wheelchair spaces on the Eurostar train that we wanted to go on and we asked for like days around that and there are absolutely no wheelchair spaces at all. So we were kind of stuck then. We were like, do we cancel the holiday completely? Um, you know, what do we do basically? Um, and it just seems crazy that on such a big train, cause I had a bit of a moan about this and found out that on each Eurostar train that goes to Disney, there are only two spaces for a wheelchair which just seems crazy because they are huge trains and yeah it's just it, it's making travel a lot more difficult for someone with a disability which just seems wrong to me um apparently it's only because they have they because they only have two guards on the train that that's what they have to do but for me i don't know i feel quite angry about it to be honest so yeah, we were like contemplating like whether to cancel the holiday and try and rebook it for another time. Um, in the end, we kind of rang up again and said like, okay, what if what if I bring my manual wheelchair um, and we fold it down? Like, would that work? And they said yes, but you would need to properly book like um, I don't know if it's first class or like premiere or something. So like the high like not normal class basically like the higher one up um because you would need the space to store the wheelchair so we have ended up doing that which i feel a little bit peed off about if i'm honest having to pay extra just because i'm in a wheelchair just to me feels wrong but that's what we've ended up having to do so that's the first part so i would just say if you're going to be going in a wheelchair like book ridiculously early because there just never seem to be any wheelchair spaces. Um, you can also sign up to Eurostar to get notifications when they release new tickets, which is probably the best thing, but I didn't know about this until we had the problem. Um, so if you are planning on traveling by Eurostar at all, anytime, and you're in a wheelchair, definitely like sign up for notifications because yeah, hopefully you then won't have that problem. But actually in the Disney park, there are quite a few things you can do to sort of help if you have a disability. So you can get something called an access card if you've got a disability. When you get to the Disney park, you should either go to the Donald desk, City Hall or Studio Services when you arrive. Make sure you go there with your companion. And you also need to take some evidence. So um, like a blue 
badge, like parking badge, um, your PIP or DLA letter or a medical certificate, basically some sort of proof that you have a disability and you will be like issued with an access card. There are two types of access card. First one is a priority card and basically that's for anybody who is like officially registered as disabled. There is also an easy access card. So that's for someone who has like a temporary illness or someone that's pregnant. Um, and I think you probably need different like, um, what do you call it? Like proof for those different kind of things. So they have a number of benefits, the access cards. It can mean that you don't have to queue for rides. So if you have trouble maybe standing, um, if you have a child um, that perhaps has something like autism or ADHD and really can't handle like being in crowds a lot, um, it means you can kind of go through a different entrance to the front of the queue and then they will let you on when you're able to get on. Um, it also means you can access rides through specially adapted entrances. So if you're in a wheelchair and you can't sort of get through the normal queuing bit, they can like take you around to another entrance, um, which should hopefully be like, take a bit of the stress out of it. Um, it also means you can have specially designated areas for parades and shows. So the like one of my biggest bugbears is when you're in crowds being stuck behind a whole load of people when you're in a wheelchair and you cannot see anything. So for the parades and the shows, you have to get there like a little bit earlier, but there are special areas for people with access cards so that you can actually see. Um, so I think it's definitely worth like investigating that. And you can also have, have up to four helpers with you, which for me is great because we're going as a family of five and it's a bit frustrating when you have to pick one to be a carer and then leave the rest behind and you get split up all the time because you're on a family holiday, you want to spend time together. Um, those four helpers, obviously, they have to be, I think, adults or over the age of like, a, like you know, a certain age and they have to be able to assist you basically so there's like a number of rules about what they should be able to do but the sort of the thing is there basically you can also apparently which i will be investigating get free disney park admission for one helper as long as you've shown like official documents to prove that you are registered disabled you should be able to get the park ticket price back for your carer which i think is going to be amazing because I couldn't go to Disney probably without a carer. So the fact that, you know, we can get that money back for the carer's ticket is gonna save us a lot of money. And, you know, that's brilliant for us. And then the last part I wanted to talk to you about was just like generally helping in the park and planning for things in the park. So there are a couple of different apps. So there is the Magi Park app. Um, oh, I haven't got my phone with me. Um, and there's also the Disneyland Paris app. They kind of offer different things, like one of them's got a map on it. Um, so when you're walking around the park, you can kind of see where you are. You can get paper maps as well, but it might be helpful. Um, I think it's the Magic Park app as well. It has like queue times on it. So if you want to go on a ride, you can look at it on your app and it will tell you how long the queue is. And you can also get it to like send you a notification to tell you like when the queue time has gone down. Um, so yeah, like that's quite helpful because if it's like busy at a certain time rather than standing in the queue, you can be off doing other things and then go back there when the queue is like quieter. So it's worth having a look at them. They're both free apps. Um, so yeah, just download them and have a little look at them. The other thing I was going to say about being in the park is that you can also get something called PhotoPass Plus, um, which is similar, I think, to the PhotoPass thing in Florida, although I don't think there's as many photographers and like photo opportunities. So basically, there are official photographers all around the Disney park, mostly, I think, at the Disney character meet and greets and on some rides, but I think there are meant to be some dotted around the park. I think it's a little bit hit and miss about whether you find them. Um, and basically they will take photos for you. So whether that's with characters in the, just in the park generally, and then there's also the ride photos. Um, so you can either buy the Disney park, the, what do you call it? Photo pass in advance. Or I think what you can do is like when, each time someone like gets a photo, you 
um, get a little card to hold on to. So at the end, you can also decide like if you want to use the photo pass or not. I think there's slightly different prices, like a little bit cheaper if you buy it in advance. Um, so your photo pass would be valid for 10 days from the first use. So you could use it for a holiday, um, well, a whole holiday or well, I don't know, if you were going to go on two holidays in consecutive weeks, I suppose you could use it that. Um, if you buy it in advance, you get a little card and you just present it to any like photo pass photographer or like at the photo sales council uh, counter and they'll put it all on there. And then at the end, you've got all your photos like in a digital format and you can print them out and do what you want with it. Um, the photos are available for one year after like the first use of your card. So... I know some people have like not realized that and then gone to check their photos and they've like either nearly expired or they've expired completely. So I would like recommend if you're gonna do that, make sure you kind of get all your photos off the photo pass when you get home so that they're not going anywhere. Um, I haven't decided yet whether we're gonna get a photo pass or not. Um, I'm taking my big camera with me. So, you know, you can give that to people to take photos of you and stuff. Um, and I think it's about 65 euros for the photo pass, but you can wait until the end of the holiday, see how many photos you've got and decide whether you think it's worth it or not. So I think that's possibly what we might do. Um, but yeah, we'll see. And that is everything in my little, well, I'll say little, it's been a long planning video. Um, I really hope you have found some of it helpful. I've done quite a lot of research and I hope this maybe just saves you from having to do as much research yourself. If you would like to see any other types of videos, I would be really interested to hear like your comments. Um, would you, I'm hoping to vlog like when we're at Disney. So hopefully there'll be quite a few vlogs. Possibly might do what's in my Disney parks bag. I'm not sure yet. But if there's any other Disney related videos you'd like to see before, during or after the holiday, please let me know. I'm also planning to do some blog posts as well. Um, and if there's any other types of videos you want to see that aren't Disney related, please let me know as well. Um, I'd love to hear your comments and if you would give me a like and subscribe to my channel, it would really make my day. Um, and yeah, I will see you again very soon for another video. Bye!